And the fact that we celebrate Resurrection Sunday is the focus of our Christianity. I know a lot of people like other days, but this is the focus. Somebody said this is the focus. Praise God. Mark 16, 6, NIV says, don't be alarmed. You can turn there if you like. Mark 16, 6, nothing wrong with looking at it in your Bible, pulling it up on your phone, whatever one you like, and it's the quickest. Just look at the word, praise God. It says, don't be alarmed. How many of you know what alarm means? He said, you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. Hallelujah. And uh, what we know is that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, the brought, had brought spices to anoint Jesus' body. And they came upon a young man dressed in a white robe at the grave site. And then he tells them, don't be alarmed. How many know you be alarmed if you walk down to the graveyard and you go going to visit a relative's uh, uh, grave and they say, don't be alarmed, they risen. Alarm would not be the word. <laughs> be like them three stood your feet, don't fail me now. So they had a right and to be alarmed. One, that the body was not there. In fact, that was this thing called resurrection. And he told them, see the place where they laid him. Amen. So we see that they were alarmed, and, but he told them he's risen. A lot of people are looking for the Lord in different places this morning, but the main thing we need to know is that what? He's risen. Amen. Because if he wasn't risen, then we wouldn't have a right to the tree of life. We would not hope in eternity today. And if he had not been raised, your faith would be futile. Amen. I said in 1 Corinthians 15, 17, NIV, it tells us that. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. He didn't, if he hadn't been, we weren't celebrating Resurrection Day. Uh, today, you still be in your sins, you still be on your way to hell. How many of you glad that he's risen today? And, 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 and that is a fact alone. I like that word futile because you see it a lot on some of those action figure shows and, and on Star Trek, and they say resistance is futile. That means you don't have a way to resist against it. But thank God for Jesus and what was done. And if he, if he was still dead, we, he could not be my Savior today. He would be just another man that died. But aren't you glad he was the son of God? And he made a way for us, not just for now, but for eternal life. That's the ultimate goal, isn't it? I mean, you know, we need life after this. Somebody need to know it's a better thing than what I'm living now. Amen. Somebody need to know I'm living this life so I can live again. And because Jesus died, we have that. And he has been raised. I looked at another scripture in Acts 1, 11, NIV. It said, men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who's taken away from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. No longer talking to the mayors and, and, and the women today uh, at the tomb. We, it's the disciples sitting up looking in the sky after they've seen Jesus ascend up. And the angels said, me in a Galilee. <laughs> you know, some people still looking. And some still just looking at the sky, but for a wrong reason. Some not looking at the sky for him to come back. They looking at the sky to see what's falling. How many of you know there are people in nations around the world that are looking at the sky to see when the next bomb is going to be dropped? How many of you know this morning we should be thankful to God today that, that we're not in those nations, but even those nations should know that when you look to the sky, let's look for Jesus coming back. Amen. 
because he's risen, because I know he's coming back, and because I know the cross shows that there's nothing Christ will not do for me. You know, you, some people say, don't go there. <laughs> there's some places you won't go there for people. But Jesus went there for us today. He went, praise God, that we may receive the promise that we'll never have to be separated from God again. The disciples stood there looking and the angels told them, look, the same way he left is the same way he's coming back. How many know we ought to be happy? I went and saw a lady in the grocery store and she looked at us and she said, y'all ready? <laughs> well, like, what she talking about, ready? You, and, and, but then, you know, I've been to getting to look, and she was talking about a spiritual thing. She said, now, and, and you know, we should have that urgency. Today, he just might come. Did that cross your mind this morning? I don't think it did right this morning. But, you know, every day, you know, we don't think about that every day, but it's any day now. Any day now. I remember, praise God, when we were younger, real poor people. Some of y'all probably weren't like this. Most of y'all had your little pajamas and your feet fit in them, and, and, and they were all over, and, and they had little uh, bunnies on them and pictures. How many y'all had pajamas? <laughs> How many of y'all raised up in pajamas, went to, in pajamas every night? But they don't raise your hand, because you with me, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in the country, they would let you put some clothes on. And those clothes you slept in, you were ready to roll. Anybody ever heard that term? You know, you can sleep ready to roll. That means when you rolled out of that bed that next day, you can get up and go right on outside and start playing. I know y'all had your little pajamas on and all that little fuzzy words and whatever. But you know what? As Christians, you need to be ready to roll. <laughs> oh, yeah. You need to have your, 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 your clothes on, your armor on. You need to be ready. If Jesus come back while you sleep, you got your clothes on. You got salvation. You know you're ready to go. Praise God. Now y'all like ready to roll, don't you? <laughs> God is good. Praise God, because Jesus said in Revelation 22, 7, Revelation 22, 7, it said, Look, I'm coming soon. Blessed is the one who keep the words of the prophecy written in this stroke. That's Revelation. That's the last book of the Bible. He said, look, I'm coming soon. He said, well, he hadn't come back yet. Let me tell you something. A day was as a thousand years in the Lord's sight. And I'm telling you, there's over 2,000 years have passed. And if we don't live like he's coming back, then you're not ready to go. Somebody say amen. He said, blessed is the one, what, who's looking. Because look, I'm coming soon. You said, come on back, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Now, if you have a hesitation, get ready. <laughs> What's that TDJ say? Get ready, get ready, get ready. But you know, he's good to be ready. Why? He's risen. And what else? He's coming back. How many are you glad of that today? Go ahead and stand. Go ahead and praise God just because he's good. But especially praise God because he, he has made a way for us. Praise God. And he's coming soon. Praise God. You should just thank God for that today. You don't have to worry about the Easter bunny. He ain't bringing you nothing. Then die for you, that chocolate. It'll be there. Then it'll be gone. Probably tomorrow. Isn't that right, sister? Good to enjoy. Enjoy things you have. But just know it ain't about the Easter bunny today. <laughs> It's about our Father who gave us life, and we live that resurrection like today. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Man, we thank God for this resurrection Sunday. Yeah. We know Jesus died, and in three days he rose. And he's coming back again. Hallelujah. So we want to be ready when he comes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. These are the days of Elijah. 
declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. As the trumpet calls, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and not of Zion's heal salvation come. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Praise your God. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. <laughs> and these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are as white in your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, yes. declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes, yeah. riding on the clouds, Hallelujah. riding like the sun. As the trumpet calls, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and now the Zion till salvation comes. Oh, yes, salvation comes. Hallelujah. Let's declare it. No God, nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Nobody. Nobody. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. As the trumpet calls, lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. And not of Zion's heal, salvation comes. Behold, he comes. He comes. Riding on the clouds. Come on, Jesus. Shining like the sun. Hallelujah. Lift your, Lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And not of Zion's heal, salvation comes. So lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee. And not of Zion till salvation comes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's no God like Jehovah. Amen. How many believe that? Thank God for the word. Hey, ladies, here's your music. Glory to God. We thank God for the fact that there is no God like Jehovah, and we thank God for the fact that he's alive. He has risen, and thank God he has, and because he has, you and I have life and life more abundantly. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you. We just thank God for you, for our for our e-church, our online church, we say welcome. Come on in. Have a seat. Join us. We're so glad you're here. And we just thank God for you so much. And for you folks that just came in a few minutes ago, we are having a little technical difficulty with the, with the television screens and everything. So, hey, ignore all that. Focus in on me. That's a great thing to focus in on, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> no, focus in on Jesus and the fact that he's a good God. 
and he's worthy to be praised. And we can acknowledge him as our Lord and our Savior and our, our soon coming King. Just wanted to uh, say a couple of things. Wanted to thank all our children's workers that got a chance to come out and help to uh, 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 get, the, get the big church for our children uh, uh, ready to go this morning. Matter of fact, that's where they are. The children now are going to immediately go downstairs and be in their class to start off with. Then uh, now our youth are going to be up here with us until we get ready to uh, dismiss them so they can go into Pastor Ella's class with them. But children, you can uh, when you get here and stuff, they're good, that you can deposit them in, in the big church classroom downstairs. And so that's how a little bit of change of how we do things with our children. But thank God that it's going to be great and it's going to be even better than what we've been doing in times past. Amen. How many enjoying Resurrection Sunday so far? Uh, I, I, I don't know how many of you that uh, got up early today, but uh, I know a couple of you did because you were with me this morning at the, at, the, at the Resurrection Sunrise service that we had actually inside the chapel today uh, at, at, uh, at Curtis and Son and, and uh, had a wonderful message by Steve Hartz, Hartsfield and uh, the, the hospital chaplain did a great job today for us. And it's always a wonderful time to, to share uh, usually we're at the Mausoleum Hill in Evergreen uh, Cemetery, but today we're in the chapel there, and it still was a wonderful time of just fellowship with believers, folks that get on out and get on up and come on into into just to start their uh, Resurrection Sunday early, and now you're here now. And you started yours now. So I ask you to join your faith with mine. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're just going to believe God for the very best things that we can receive today. We thank God because of that. Because he lives, you and I live. And we can live and move and have our being in him. Because he live, you, lives, you you and I have life and life more abundantly. So we're just thanking God for that. Want to just tell you, just that for our, our youth that are watching that are at home, uh, what Sister Ella's going to be sharing today, she always gives us a little little uh, hint or tells us what, what she's going to be teaching about. But today, the youth are going to be listening to seven things God did in loving us. Seven things that God did in loving us. He did a lot of things, but she's going to go over seven things that he did in showing his grace, his mercy, his love for us. And so they're going to have a good time in their class as well. So we're going to uh, get right into our teaching in just a moment. Um, but before we dismiss our, our youth into their classroom, I want to go ahead and we're going to make some good faith confessions and then we're going to pray and then we'll get into the teaching. I, we, we do have a special token, as we normally do, uh, for, for everybody here. I know we got enough for everybody uh, to, to get your little, little gift, little treat before you leave. So don't leave without getting your, your, your treat uh, of, of, of candy before you leave. Amen. How many excited about that? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. The rest of I mean, y'all not excited about it, but you're going to enjoy it anyway. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Well, go ahead. Let, let's, uh, let's lift up your Bibles or your electronic device, and let's make some good faith confessions. Please repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, the ever-living, seed faith word of God, and I'll never be the same, never, ever, ever will I be the same again in Jesus' name. Point to yourself and say, I'll never be the same again. Look at a neighbor and, 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 and repeat this after me. Neighbor, I thank God for you. I want you to be believing with me that we both will receive the supernatural impartations that God would have us to receive. We thank you for the blessings of God that will overtake us today 
and we're going to enjoy ourselves in the word. Amen. Good confession, isn't it? Amen. All righty. Let's pray then. Father God, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you that this is a day that you have made. And Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for our youth that are downstairs, our children that are downstairs and as they're being ministered to, as they're receiving. We thank you for our youth in their class as they are about to go out and receive. Lord, we just thank you for everyone that's here under the sound of my voice in person. We thank you for our e-church all over the world that are listening. Lord, let us all have ears to hear and hearts to receive. We thank you for divine grace deposits and truth impartations. We thank you for inspiration. We thank you for impartations. We thank you for revelations. And in all our getting, Lord, we want to get understanding. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. Whatever you see fit to say, however you see fit to manifest, you have free reign and free will to do that. So we thank you for the anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens. We thank you that we do have life and life more abundantly. And Lord, we just... Thank you, and we give you all the praise. Satan, we're not ignorant of your devices. We, 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 we resist you, and the only place you have is under our feet as we tread upon scorpions and serpents, and we just loose the very best things of God, and, Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory, and if you agree with that, just say amen. That means so be it. Well, all right, all our youth. Pastor, would you bring my handkerchief over here as you come this way? All our youth, you can go ahead and go with Sister Ella. She goes into the uh, into you all's classroom with you, and uh, so we just thank God for you. And y'all gonna have a great time in a word today. And let's give them a round of applause as they go into their classrooms. Amen. Let's give them a better round of applause than that. Amen. Let them know we love them and appreciate them. Praise God. So we just thank God for for you, and we just thank God. At today as we come to celebrate resurrection, as we come to celebrate the supernatural uh, ability of God to show himself mightily. So I thank God. And I want you to do something for me because I, I, I need this right now. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up for a moment. Look around. If you can stand, stand. If you, if you look around. Give a Holy Ghost high, high wave to a neighbor that you hadn't said hi to. And repeat this after me. I thank God for you. You look good. You are created in the image and the likeness of God. You are special. You are unique. Nobody was created exactly like you. And we thank God for the blessing that you are. You're going to receive a special word for you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. Well, we thank God for you. Appreciate it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. It's always a, a wonderful uh, and uh, special opportunity on the Resurrection Sunday holiday. We thank God uh, this week, all this week, the uh, Holy Week, that uh, the special services that went on uh, at the First United Methodist Church, uh, I got a chance to participate and be a part of the Thursday, Maudie Thursday uh, service, and it was a lot of fun, and I understand they had a great time all week. And uh, we just thank God for any time that we can remember the price that Jesus paid so that you and I can have life and life more abundantly. We ought to remember that and take advantage of it. And so it's easy to know where you're going to focus in on, what you're going to talk about, what you're going to do, and, and what you're going to be, uh, be doing as we minister on, uh, on holy days like, like uh, Resurrection Sunday. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And we entitled this message today, A Resurrected Life. A resurrected life. What do you mean by that, a resurrected life? Well, we highlighted this particular message like this. In other words, we want to focus our thinking, and I ask you to join your faith with mine again as we go into, uh, I believe, the heart of God to understand 
this particular thing. What is that? What did we highlight? What are we going to be focusing on? Well, we said it like this. We shouldn't just experience resurrection on Easter or Resurrection Sunday, the day that we call Easter. We should live a resurrected life every day. We should live a resurrected life every day. And I'll tell you, if you got your Bibles, you can go ahead and, and go to the, the book of John, chapter 20. John, chapter 20. And we're going to start there. And uh, just, we're going to stay there. I may, may come in and add some other scriptures as the Lord leads. But what, I, what do I mean by living a resurrected life every day? Well, on Resurrection Sunday, we think about the impact that Jesus had on the world on the earth because he was raised from the dead. But I happen to be uh, studying and one of uh, the teachings that teachers that I like to listen to was making some comments and he said some things that uh, kind of stirred me up a little bit. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna relay those things to you. I figure if it blessed me, it'll bless you too, amen? I figure if I got something good out of it, this will be good for all of us. So uh, he was talking about the differences of how we think. And I always have used this particular example of a difference of when, especially if you, if you like farming, if you like uh, digging plants or, or something like that, this, this will be interesting to you. But there is a difference in these two things. What do you mean? Well, when something is buried in the ground, it's buried. It's dead. You, up, you, you dig up some dirt, and uh, even in a, at a grave site, in, 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 in a uh, cemetery, uh, they dig the dirt up, and then they put a, a dead body in, and then it's, it's buried. But there's a difference in burying something and when you dig the ground up and you plant a seed. When you plant a seed, you expect growth, life. You do basically the same thing when you bury something. Except you don't bury it as deep. But when you plant something, you're planting life. And that leads me to what was said that really blessed me because we think about this and I thought about it when I heard this statement. There's a difference in even in the Bible when folks were raised from the dead. There was a number of people that were raised from the dead. We think, I think of Lazarus immediately. Lazarus was raised from the dead. But you know, later on, Lazarus died. There's a difference, though, in, in the Bible. Even though being raised from the dead, I mean, man, that was supernatural and that was something great. Lazarus had more years to spend talking to his loved ones and fellowshipping. But there's a difference in being raised from the dead and being resurrected from the dead. What do you mean? What's the difference? Well, Jesus is our example of resurrection. When Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he would never die again. He took on a supernatural regenerated body. And he would never die again. That's even more spectacular. Being raised from the dead is great, but being resurrected means you're going to live forever. And I thank God when I thought about those things and thinking about living a resurrected life. You and I that were dead in sin, our lives spiritually was resurrected. And spiritually speaking, once we got born again, we're, spiritually, we're never going to die again. 
Now, there's a physical death, but physical death doesn't mean the cessation of life. It means separation from God when you're talking about spiritual things. You and I will never be separated from God again. Thank God for resurrection. Thank God for things that you've been resurrected from. A lot of you got resurrected from, from drugs. And you, you, you used to do it, but you'll never do it again. You made that decision. You got resurrected from defeat, financial defeat. You got resurrected from stuff, you'll never experience that again because you've been resurrected by the power of God. There are things in our life that God just doesn't want to raise us out of for a time that we'll die from it at a later date. God wants us to live a resurrected life. Well, you'll never experience those guilt and shame again from sin and defeat and doubt and unbelief. That's what we're going to be reading about today. The greatest example of a resurrected life is Jesus. He was resurrected from death to life. And he'll never die again. In our example that we see in John's Gospel, chapter 20, starting at verse 1. And I'm just going to read, I'm going to comment some as I go, and, and then we're just going to leave today. I'm gonna, I, I believe I'm going to let you out early today. Can I get an amen for that? <laughs> I thought y'all would be more excited about that. But anyway, in John's Gospel, chapter 20, starting at verse 1, it says this. The first day of the week com- cometh Mary Magdalene early. When it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and see the stone taken away from the sepulcher. They went to Jesus's grave because they weren't going to see a resurrection. They were going to anoint his anoint his body because that had been left off. That was a tradition that every Jewish uh, person would 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 experience and they went to anoint his body and they were concerned because they knew that uh, that stone had been put in in front of the the grave site and they didn't know how they were going to get in to see him and we see here in verse one when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and see the stone taken away from the sepulcher And verse 2 says, then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter. I want you to realize something about that stone. The stone got moved. Not so Jesus could get out. But that, but that so everyone else could get in and see that he wasn't in the grave anymore. Jesus didn't need the stone moved. He had now a resurrected body, supernatural. He went through the stone just like he appeared in the room, we'll see just a minute, with the doors open. That's part of resurrection power. Supernatural abilities, living a resurrected life. Do you know you and I should be experiencing the supernatural blessings of God, the resurrection power of God in different things that go on in our life and we are experiencing a lot of it and don't even realize it God's keeping back things that would hinder us and hurt us and we're going around things that we don't even see that God is protecting us from supernaturally because we are in and functioning in the supernatural resurrection power of God notice what happened with Mary these two ladies. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter 
and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. Notice, I love to, let me identify this too. John wrote the book of John. And a lot of time, when, when you read this, that other disciple that he was talking about that Jesus loved, John was talking about himself. He was the writer of it. Yeah, I guess it was all right for him to say, I'm the really the disciple. You know, there, evidently there was some competition of, amongst the disciples. You're going to see this even as, as and identify as we see. Uh, Peter, he said Peter went, and he didn't say Simon Peter was the disciple that, that Jesus loved, but he said that other disciple, <clears throat> referring to himself, whom Jesus loved and says unto them, they have taken, this is Mary speaking to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Again, Jesus had told them, in three days, I'm going to rise again. Evidently, none of them believed it. Oh, pastor, weren't they some faithless people? Well, they were people. A lot like you and I. And experience some of the same uh, challenges that we do. Nobody else had got raised from the dead. Death had never lost nobody before. Not forever. But in this time it did. So she thought, not that Jesus had rose, but somebody that came and took his body. Matter of fact, that's what the, the, the Roman government was afraid that the disciples were going to do. That's the reason they put soldiers there and they put the stone there to guard it, to keep it, what they thought the disciples were coming and stealing the body so they could declare that Jesus had rose again. But we're going to notice something about them in a minute too. But Mary said, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. Verse 4 says this, and they ran both together. They started off together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. In other words, now John's bragging about, yeah, me and Peter took off together, but I beat him and I got there first. You're talking about competitive. <laughs> I beat him. I got there before him. You don't know anybody that's competitive like that, do you? Amen. Just keep looking forward and nobody knows it's you. Amen. Praise God. Verse 5 says, and he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. In other words, John got there first. He looked in, but he didn't go in. He saw the clothes, the grave clothes, but he didn't see a body. Verse 6 says, then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeing the linen cloth lie and the napkin, verse 7, that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. That's the type person. Peter didn't stop. He just ran right on in. John stopped and looked and saw that the body wasn't there. Peter ran in. Verse 8 says this. Then went in also that other disciple. Notice how, I'll go back to verse 7 for a second. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. In other words, God is showing us here that evidently when Jesus rose, he deliberately took off the grave clothes and laid them to the side. Why would he take off the grave clothes? Because he wasn't dead anymore. He was alive. There was a, a significance to what you wore back in biblical days. Someone that was sick or had a disease process, they would wear a certain type of clothing to identify who they were or what they had. And if you weren't supposed to get near them, then you would know by what they had on. Jesus was indicating by taking those, the, the, the clothing off and lying it down, 
neatly in a, in, a, in a different place there. I'm no longer dead and I never will be again. And he was saying to us, if you partake and believe on me, never will you die. Again. We were born into this earth spiritually. Not, not in the family of God. When that age of accountability came and we realized we are, then the penalty and the, and, the, and the results of that, we would be held responsible for when we acknowledge that. Notice as we read in this chapter, verse 9, For as yet they knew not the scripture. Jesus had told them, but they knew it not. How many scriptures you, you heard over and over again? And yet, aren't walking in the light of them. That's what this is saying. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. He told them on the third day, I'm going to get up. But they didn't believe. When we don't believe what the word says, we won't expect it to come to pass. When we're walking in resurrection power of God, we got to walk in a resurrection power of knowing that his word will always come to pass. When he says by his stripes, we were healed, healing is ours, no matter what's going on with our bodies. Probably it's not a person in here that doesn't have something, some sort of pain or some sort of disease process that may be uh, you're under attack with. But Jesus, 2,000 years ago, bore all sickness, all disease, all pain. Therefore, we don't have to walk in the light of that. Evidently, we hadn't got it yet. Because when we do, we're going to speak to it and say, get away from me. I don't have to have you anymore. I'm dead to that. Because I'm walking in resurrection life. Pastor, can that happen with sickness and disease? It should happen with sickness and disease. For all of us. Every believer. Amen. Just point out a few things. Of the resurrected life. That we should be living in. Verse 11 says. But Mary stood without. Outside. At the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept. She stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. She didn't go in this time again. She stooped down and was crying, whining, and she looked inside. Verse 12 says, and seeth two angels in white setting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. When she looked in, she saw Two angels. We hadn't heard Peter or John say anything about an angel. So all of a sudden, Mary saw something evidently that they didn't see. At first anyway. Or at least we have no indication that they did in the word. Notice what happened. Verse 13. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Why are you crying, girl? She says unto them, because they have taken away my Lord. They still hadn't got it yet. And I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. But notice. And knew not that it was Jesus. Didn't she know Jesus? Yes. Yes. Why didn't she recognize him? One of the things, if you're not expecting a miracle, when you see it, sometimes you might not even recognize it. She knew Jesus. She should have recognized him immediately. But she wasn't expecting a resurrected Savior. Even when she went to the sepulcher, she went to anoint a dead body. How many people are anointing dead things every day in their own life? 
things that will not edify them, things that will not give them a blessing, things that will not uh, produce in their life. And they're anointing it. They're, they're walking in it. Uh, they're, they're walking in dead, dead situations, sometimes dead relationships, sometimes dead positions because they're not expecting God to raise them up out of those things. Look at your neighbor and tell them, God wants to raise you up out of all the messes that you got yourself into. Will you see it when he does? Think about that for a second. And knew, and she knew not that it was Jesus. Verse 15, Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him. If you took him, tell me where you took him. And I will take him away and I'll put, put him back where he's supposed to be. Then something supernatural happened here. Jesus spoke to her. Jesus said unto her, Mary. He called her by name. When he spoke to her and called her name, something clicked. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master. All of a sudden, her eyes were open to see and know it was him. When you open your eyes, when you hear the word of God, when you hear God speak to you about things, and you really believe, your eyes will be open. And you'll see things that you never saw before. She saw him. She thought he was the gardener. But when he spoke, and he called her by name, does God know your name? If he knows your name, he'll call you by name. So quit answering to all these other crazy words that people are calling you. Quit answering. you. Uh, husband ain't got no business calling their wives my old lady anyway. A lot of husbands calling their life, wives old lady and wondering why they look the way they look. They're speaking that on them. Ladies, don't call. You. Uh, don't be telling your friend, well, my, me and my old man... You wonder how come he can't do some of the stuff he used to do. You speak an old man on him. Amen, pastor, that's good teaching. Go ahead. I believe I will. Whether you react to it or not, it's the truth anyhow. Whether you're married to him or not, don't call him your old man. He ain't got no business. Well, I won't go there. That, that ain't my teaching. Amen. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. He, was, he told her, don't, don't even don't touch me. So evidently, he hadn't returned the blood, his blood, to the, to the throne room. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my father. And your father, and to my God and your God. You know, I thought about something. Why did he tell Peter and John this? They were there. Evidently, it was something special when he told the woman of God that she needed to do. Because we know, and we always talk about, we use the word doubting before Thomas, but Thomas wasn't the only one to doubt it. Did nobody come to the, did none of the disciples come to the sepulcher? Before the women went and told them that the body was gone. And then only two of them went. 
I believe that's the reason Jesus, uh, this woman will do what I tell her to do. Women of God, when God speaks to you, he expects you to do what he tells you to do. Amen? Men of God, when God speaks to us, he expects us to do what he tells us to do. He says, the word says in verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at the evening, notice this, same day. A lot of times we read different things that happen on Holy, on Holy Week, and we think they happened years prior to. Uh, so many events happen in, uh, on the week of when Jesus, before he went to the cross, that we teach about like they happened, you know, 20 years down the road. But a lot of these things you'll see as we get to the end of this chapter, you know, so many things happen in Jesus' ministry that, the Bible says there's not room enough to, for it to be written down. But notice this. He said, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, they were there because they were scared. They had just crucified Jesus, and they were afraid they're coming at us next. And eventually they would. But they changed. Something happened. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and says unto them, Peace be unto you. In other words, you see, you look at the other passages in the other Gospels where uh, it didn't say that they opened it. Jesus opened the door and walked in. It says the doors were shut. All of a sudden, he appeared right before them. He was in now his supernatural regenerated body. Evidently, he had went and deposited the blood because in a moment you'll see he didn't tell them like he told Mary, don't touch me. Matter of fact, he told them, come on. We'll read it in just a second. But resurrection power, when we operate in it, We'll do things supernaturally. When we get our resurrected body, this is an example of how you want to be somewhere? I guess you just think it, and you're there. How would you like that? You want to be in Spain? I'm in Spain. Well, that's magic. No, that's supernatural power of God. When we do it, you have things, a lot of things like that to look forward to. But I believe we can experience some of that, this kind of authority and power right here on earth. We see some examples in the word. Where different ones did things supernaturally. You reckon God did it for one person, he'll do it, he won't do it for others? No. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why do some things happen with some people then and it does with us? A lot of times it's because we don't believe. When we believe the word of the resurrected power of God, and we walk in the light of it, and we feed on it, and we expect it, then we will see it. That's what happened with Mary when she heard the word. She turned. She turned away with what she was looking at. And she said, Master! Her eyes were open. And she saw him supernaturally. Jesus knows what he said. Peace be unto you. Because, you know, all of a sudden, if Jesus appears right in here right now, the ushers couldn't stop all y'all from getting out those doors. What about you, Pastor? Well, I like to think I said the Rabona, it's master. But you know, y'all might have to catch me first. I don't know. I 
I never had Jesus appear to me. I remember one time I was praying. I, I, just, I was just praying. I was praying in the spirit for a long period of time. I was praying, and I sensed the presence. And on the inside of me, I, I, I said, there's an angel behind me. And did you just turn around and jump and say, praise God? No, I was too afraid to turn. And finally, after I don't know how long it was, I didn't turn. I didn't see anything. But see, I, I was in fear then. I wasn't going to be able to see nothing. My eyes wasn't open. But I sensed the presence of someone in there with me. I wonder how much we hadn't seen that God wants us to see. Because we hadn't allowed him to open our spiritual eyes to see it. You ever thought about that? Start thinking about it. Because in the last days, we're going to see things that we never saw before. I believe we're going to see things in this, in this sanctuary building that we've never seen before. I believe we're going to see supernatural healings, supernatural deliverances. I believe it's not just going to be for this building, but I believe because we come together in unity expecting these things, because I'm going to teach on them more and more and more about the examples that we have, we're going to start seeing these things. And those of us that believe, we're going to start seeing them at different places, on your job, with your children, with your grandchildren, things you've been believing God for, in your bank account. Wouldn't it be great for you to open up your bank account and all of a sudden, and I almost said a small amount, but all of a sudden you see a million dollars in there. I, I, I got an uh-huh and one amen. How about, about the rest of y'all? Y'all, y'all, y'all want to see that? I believe I'd be amen and a little bit more than that. Glory to God, amen. Yes, sir. You wouldn't be calling that. They done made a mistake, would you? Some of y'all would get there and withdraw it as quick as you could. <laughs> if it's yours, it's yours. You ain't got to be scared. <laughs> if it's really yours, now if it's a mistake, you want to go to the right person, right? Yeah, I bet you do. Amen. Yeah, I know you do. You, you, you're a truthful person. Glory to God. I want to think I would too. I want to go to. <laughs> but I love to see it up under my name. Glory to God. And then I check on it. Now, y'all didn't make a mistake. Did, oh, no, somebody put it in there for you. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. At least I got a hallelujah on that one. <laughs> Nobody didn't jump a pew or anything, but that's all right. <laughs> We're talking about a resurrected life, y'all. See, expectations got to get higher. God wants to raise us up higher. Our expectations need to be higher. Than we've ever thought before. See, I'm trying not to get excited to finish this chapter because I got to let you go. I told you I was going to let you go earlier. If I, if I finish in the next six minutes, you'll be earlier than you were the last three weeks. <laughs> let me clarify. I don't want to be a liar. Amen. <laughs> Did I get to verse 19? That same day, even when the week. Yeah, yeah, I got that. There's verse 20. And when he had said, And when, and when he had said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. His hands where the nail spikes went in, his side where they pierced him. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. They, they changed when they saw. Faith is believing what you hear God say. The Disciples changed and got happy when they saw with their eyes. Resurrected life, we act upon that when we hear what God says, the truth. Verse 21, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so said I. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Did they get filled with the Spirit? They got saved. They got saved. You got to be saved before you can get filled with the Spirit. They got saved here. They got born again. He breathed on them. Life. He breathed life into them. Why? They received. And I know they had to confess him as their Lord and Savior. They probably dropped down on knees and did. Who, whosoever sins, Ye remit, he told them. 
They are remitted unto them. They got saved. That's what it says. And whosoever, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. No, they turned, they said turn over. But then, you know, evidently he 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 wasn't there when Thomas said what he said. You go back in the Bible, Thomas said, I ain't gonna believe unless I see, see the, see the uh because uh, they told him about he had, they, he had appeared, they, they saw him. Tom said, I'm not going to believe it until I can see the spikes, holes in his, in, in his hand and a, and, a, and a hole in his side. Jesus said, verse 24, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Okay? The other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. Okay, so this is afterwards. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my fingers into the print of, his, of the nails and thrust my hands into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again, so again, supernatural appearance, his disciples were within. And Thomas with them this time. Then came Jesus. Again, he didn't walk through the door. Notice what it said. The door is being shut. He just appeared. And stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. They were finna take off again. He said, calm down. It's just me. Then he focused on Thomas. Then said he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. Look at my hands. Reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. You said you wouldn't believe until you saw. You said you wouldn't believe until you felt. What did Thomas do? And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. He didn't, it didn't say he reached out and felt his hands or his side. He just said, my Lord, my God. His eyes came open. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Notice. I believe God is, was speaking to Thomas here, but he's also speaking to us. Those, all of us that hadn't seen him. He said, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Believe what? The word. The truth. When you and I hear the truth, see the truth in the Bible. We hadn't got to see him materialize in our room. When we choose to believe, Jesus said, blessed are they that have believed that hadn't seen anything other than the words and accepted it. And then verse 30, as we come to a conclusion, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. He did all kinds of things which are not written in this book. But he did put in the book what he wanted us to see and hear and act upon. When we walk in the supernatural power of resurrection, we'll start living a more effective resurrected life. Bow your heads. You at home, bow your heads as well. If you're there and maybe you have Confess Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. But you hadn't been expecting very much. You've been living basically the same natural way that you lived before you got saved. It may have been 20 years. It may have been last week. But you want to walk in a resurrected, changed life to where the empowerments, the graces and mercy of God overtake you on a daily basis. You're asking God right now, Come into my heart. Come into my life afresh and anew. I want to receive the resurrection power functioning in me every day. If that's you, whether you're saved or not, if you're not saved, I'm going to pray with you. And I want everyone to say this right now if you hadn't confessed him do this right now repeat after me father God right now I confess with my mouth I believe in my heart that you died for me 
I make you my Savior. I make you my Lord. Thank you, Lord. And this is, and this is for all of us, whether, you've been, whether you've already prayed that prayer or not. Now, we're adding this addendum to that. Father God, I choose to believe what the word says. From this moment on, I'm going to walk in resurrection power. My expectations are for the supernatural power of God to manifest wherever I go. I want to see blinded eyes open, deaf ears open. I want to see the supernatural manifestations that you would have me to see and do and be. I believe it. I'm saying it. I expect it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. You believe it? I said you believe it? If you do, you can expect it. Things are going to change. Things are going to change. Things are going to change because your expectations of what is yours has changed. Things that you need to let go, you're going to let them go with the help of God. Things that you now need to grab hold of, you're going to grab hold of them with the help of God. And you're going to walk in the empowerment and the graces and the mercies of God. What are you talking about? Maybe some habit that you need, need to turn loose that you know you need to turn loose. Maybe some thinking that you've been doing that needs to be renewed by the word of God. How do we do that? We get in the word. How many believe that? If you believe that, raise your hand real high. Amen. I see somebody raising two hands, glory to God. Amen. I raised both of mine. Thank God for the word. Amen. Well, I went uh, eight minutes instead of six. But I'm finished. Right now. Those of you at home, and maybe some of you watching this on the screen, we, we prayed the prayer. There are three mini books that we want to give you. Absolutely free. All you have to do is ask for them. They talk about the three of them, the new birth, why tongues, and in him. It'll tell you about who you are in Christ, how, what, how, how you get saved, and, and what it is to be saved once you get there. And then the empowerment of your prayer language, speaking and praying in the spirit. And then this QR code on the screen for those of you at home that you can scan with your phone. And it'll take you to a video to tell you about how you can, uh, that you explain. And because and, and, you need to write it down and tell somebody, that I'm a brand new creature in Christ. And then if you want to be a part of this church, you can be a part of this church anywhere in the world now. Amen. Welcome to the family, we say. On the screen, too, for those here in, in the house, I'm going to go off the screen for a second and get my envelope. I left it over here. Amen. Go ahead and raise your offering envelope if you're in the house. And if you're at home, we want to pray. Here, we're going to drop it in boxes when we leave. But don't leave because we got that special gift for you, those of you that are here. So don't leave. Or at least you can pick. I think they got it out there. You can just pick, it, pick, pick one up. Amen. Just get one, okay? Amen. <laughs> well, you, you, well, anyway, I'll talk to you about that. But as we pray, we're going to thank God that all the needs of this ministry are met, but all our personal needs are met, too, because we're expecting it. How many expect an increase in your salary? Amen. Now, you, you, you want to live that resurrected life, don't start expecting that. Expecting the money to come, amen. Where's it going to come? I don't know. That's up to God. Don't put limits on him. He'll get it to you if he can get it through you. Amen. Our part is giving. He's going to give us a hundredfold return on our giving. I'm believing that. Let's pray. Father God, as we give, we give in faith. We give thank you for increase. We still thank you for resurrection power in our giving, in our hearts, in our bank accounts. Lord, we say we say, Satan, take your hands off our stuff, loosen and let it go. We commission ministering spirits. We say, angels, go forth and cause our money to come. We claim double for our trouble. What you've stolen for us, you got to give us double back. And we claim those unsaved loved ones. Lord, we love you, and we give you all the praise. And if you agree with that, just say amen, and so be it. Increase is on its way. 
I have it now. Amen. Praise God. Those of you, uh, E-Church, uh, announcers coming, going to say some things to, to you. Listen closely to us. We, we love you. Go back and listen to this again. It'll bless you. Amen. Have a great Resurrection Sunday. Here's our announcer. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today for this life-changing word. If you pray the prayer of salvation, we have some materials to help you with your new walk with God. Three mini books by Dr. Kenneth E. Hagan, The New Birth, In Him, and Why Tongues. These books are a free gift that will give you a greater understanding of salvation, what you are entitled to have in God, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. If you would like to become a partner with RTWBC, your prayers and financial support will help us work together and accomplish great things for God. On our church website, rtwbc.com, you can submit prayer requests and also give to the ministry safely and securely by debit or credit card on our online giving page. Just go to Choose Funds and follow the directions. You can also give by Cash App at dollar sign RTWBC, PayPal at RTWBC at BellSouth.net, or by mail at Reaching the World Bible Church, P.O. Box 2487, Sylacauga, Alabama 35150. Stay connected with us through our Reaching the World Bible Church Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and podcast platforms. You can also contact us at www.rtwbc.com. Joining us at 109 North Cannon Avenue, Sylacauga, Alabama 35150 or call us at 256-249-9790. Please join us again for our next service where we will continue to preach the uncompromising Word of God to help feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. God bless you and we'll see you on the next time.